Hey guys, had a lot of requests for Into Thin Air, like how to play Into Thin Air, Into Thin Air tabs, and all that stuff. So, I'm gonna teach you how to play Into Thin Air. I'm not the best tabbing person. And uh, I'll continue the Envision uh, tutorial, like the entire song, um, right after I'm finished with the Into Thin Air videos, if we do the entire song. Um, but for this song, it's really, it, it helps a lot if you play on. Uh, like thinner gauge strings such as 9 gauge or 10 gauges. Um, if you play on 11 gauge strings, it, it'll get pretty difficult um, to make it sound right because you, unless you have like super duper duper high action, then it, it'll sound fine. But a uh, good pick would probably be really thin pick, sharp point. I'll use Tortex 3s. And yes, there's a hole in the middle of this thing. Um, but really thin to get the, uh, you know, you can hear that really, really easy. And, uh, yeah, let's get to it. So, the first thing we're going to do is uh, an into the nair. Uh, a lot of them are partial, like, double stomps. So, you have, like, ring finger on the 7th fret on the A and an index finger on the 5th uh, fret of the D. So, you know, and then we're going to have that open G. So... So that's the very first uh, first three notes of the song, and basically this song repeats a lot of the rhythm. So we're gonna play this ring finger on the seven, index finger on the fifth fret of the A string, and open G, and then we're going to slide down, middle finger on the fifth fret of the A, index finger on the fourth fret of the D, and open G again, and then we're going to put our index finger on the third fret of the A string and our ring finger on the 5th fret of the D string and an O, I mean, well, actually, middle finger on the 4th fret of the G string, so. So everything so far is... And, um, from right there we basically do the same exact thing, um, but Instead of that ring, instead of that middle finger being on the fourth fret of the uh, G string, we're going to hit the fifth fret harmonic on the G. It's all pretty sounding, right? So we've got. Um, all right. So that's the very that's the intro of Into the Nair. <laughs> no, don't worry. I'm gonna teach you more. That's not that's not that's not it. So. Um, right after that, we're going to be repeating those, um, right? We're going to be using that type of pattern, going down and then back up. So, the uh, only thing that changes really is our picking pattern in the rhythm, alright? So we're just going to go, I'll just play it really slow for you guys, I'm pretty sure you guys can figure this out. It's just. Too, I'll play it even slower so you can kind of it's just it seems like it'd be really difficult for me well it'll just be really time-consuming for me to uh, explain the uh, the part where it goes so I'll just play it really slow for you guys and I guarantee you guys you guys got this so to go to the hardest rhythm part, I think, in the entire song. So this part, uh, you have lots of harmonics, um, and you got, you know, weird, weird things. So what we're going to do in this part, it's going to be the same type of uh, picking pattern, almost the exact same picking pattern. There's going to be a little bit different things, like instead of the open G, we're going to hit, we're going to hit the open G one time, right? Open G, and then we're going to use our pinky to hit it, 
and then we're going to jump back up to the ring finger and then we're going to hit the open B. So we've got So exact same thing, it's just to open G, uh, open G one time, second time you use your pinky, and then we're gonna jump back up to the um, seventh fret of the A, and then hit that, we're gonna hit that uh, open B. So that way you get that nice little. And then we're going to have the same type of pattern again on this, you know, the next section, which is. So, kind of the exact, it's the exact same picking shape that you did on the last one we did there. Only thing is that we have the 5th uh, and 4th fret, you know, 5th and the A and 4th and the D, and the, uh, we're holding those down instead. And instead of hitting the uh, actual 7th fret on the G in the open B, we're just going to hit the 7th uh, fret on the G with the harmonic and then the seventh on the B harmonic. So. so, everything so far together, I mean, for this weird part, it's. All right, um, on this one, there's no open G. It's just like straight up, you're gonna hit that freaking fifth harmonic on the G string. It's like, that's what you're gonna do, so. Normally we'd be playing something like this, right? In the actual regular shapes. So we're doing, you know, the regular shape, and then regular shape. But right here, instead of hitting that note, we're actually going to hit the uh, fifth fret harmonic on the G string. Um, instead of that, you know, fourth fret on the G string. So we've got... And uh, right here's the hard part. Because you're going to be using your other fingers for this one, so I probably recommend you using your middle finger and your ring finger. If you feel like your pinky and your ring finger are hardcore, you could go ahead and try to use those if you'd like. Um, one thing is that if you have really long fingernails, it's going to be really difficult for you to. Uh, it's going to be difficult. You should probably cut your fingernails a little bit if they're really long um, on both hands. I mean. If you have long fingernails, I mean, it's going to be hard for you to have those open, clean notes, you know, on the G. Because when you have those fingernails that are long, you're, I mean, they're just going to, they're going to, they're going to muff other things. They're going to block the sound from being all open. I'm so sorry. I'm in such a bad job right now. All right. So I hope that everything so far has been making some type of sense. Um... Now, after that 5th fret harmonic on the G string, we're going to go ahead and hit the A and D. Same notes, so we got... And then right here, we're going to use our middle finger and our pinky on our left hand. We're going to place our pinky on the 5th fret of the B string. We're going to place our middle finger on the 3rd fret of the high E string, making this sound using our two fingers, um, well for you if you think you're super duper, if it's more comfortable, not thinking that you're super duper hardcore, I'm just saying, if it's comfortable for you, use your pinky and your ring finger, it's good practice for like flamenco, because you know, you use your pinky. Um, I, I personally like to use my middle finger and ring finger, because I think that helps a lot, uh, strength wise, it gives me more control. So. And right there is where we're going to bar the uh, pinky to hit the 5th fret on the high E. So we've got... Making it sound pretty, I think. Alright, so everything together in the harmonic part, um, it's going to be like this. I'll play it slowly for you, okay? And then we're going to 
and slide up. Our index finger and ring finger only move up two frets, and that's it. They don't change their positions or anything like that. Still two frets apart. Um, and then from right here, it's going to be a little bit different for our, you know, middle finger and pinky. It's going to do a little bit different stuff. So the one we did before it was, and then here, we're going to use our middle finger to hit the fifth fret on the B and the open E. So we're going to do that. All right. That's what we have when we slide up. So really slow together, not from the very last part. All right, and then we're going to put our pinky on the uh, seventh fret of the G string and our middle finger on the fifth fret of the high E. And it's a very uncomfortable feeling at first. I mean, it's very, very, very uncomfortable. I mean. It looks uncomfortable. It really does. I mean, it's terrible. It looks it looks horrible. Um, if you feel like you can, you could go ahead and you know, you could bar it um, with your index. But it's going to be a little bit difficult because um, we'll see. Let's see. That might actually work better. <laughs> Let me find out. Yeah, that'll be the hard part. Um, yeah, just just stick with the middle finger. I think that that'll work better. I mean, you can go... It gives you more control of what you're doing. I think it does. But if you really think that it helps you a little bit more by just barring with your index finger, go for it. Now let me finish explaining what notes you have to play. <laughs> so slowly what I've taught you so far on the last section here is... Whoops. Oh, yeah. Right? And then we're going to hit the A and then the D again. And then middle finger on the high E on the 5th fret and pinky on the G7. And then we're going to hit the A note on the 5th fret again. And then we're going to bar our pinky and hit that high E on the 7th fret and the high E. Yeah, exactly. So. And then you repeat it. So I'll play it really slow for you. I'm sorry, I'm doing such a bad job on explaining things today. Uh, I did not sleep the way I wanted to at all. But that's good. yeah. This is probably one of those things that'll be easier if I just play it really slow for you. So uh, I'll play it really slow for you right now. Okay. Go back to the regular pattern. So this part, this next part sounds really pretty. Um, index finger on the second fret of the D string, open G, and then we're gonna put our middle finger on what, whatever finger you feel like playing, actually. But I think middle finger would probably be the best. Um, on the third fret of the B, and an open E. So just go and watch my right hand for the uh, picking pattern. I'll play it slowly. And then we're going to put our ring finger on the fourth fret of the D. And then pinky on the fifth fret of the D. Here we're going to put, uh, you're going to go back to the ring finger on the 4th fret of the D, but we're, our index finger is also going to hit the 2nd uh, fret of the high E. So. And this solo 
let's start. And I'll put the solo in for the next lesson. If we, if you guys want it. So it'd be like... But, of course, it'd be extreme distortion mode. Um, also, please put in the comments and tell me if you would like to have the entire tutorial of Into Thin Air.